folks, <laughs> Thursday night, welcome aboard Murder Hobo Inc. the Cacophony series. Uh, we are winding this uh, campaign slash soap opera up. So uh, if you're a longtime listener, our apologies, but uh, all good things must come to an end. Uh, tonight, we're going to pick up where we left off two weeks ago. These guys are flying out of Freckland after uh, Camille discovered that uh, the potential love of her life had five husbands uh, pissing her wives. off, essentially. Wives. Or wives. Yeah, wives, <laughs> husbands. It's been a long day, folks. Uh, the storms look to have passed, so uh, hopefully it'll be a drama-free show. Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive if you want to shoot the shit about D&D. &D. Join our Discord if you want something cool like a phone case or a pillow or duvet cover, shower curtain, shit like that. Cool shirts, you know, stuff like that. Uh, check out our shop down below. Uh, also, don't forget our uh, sponsors. We've got Pirate Dog Dice for dice that don't suck. And uh, big old, new Big Red here. Or no, that's old Big Red. This is new Big Red. Uh, roll nice and high, especially when I'm doing damage. And of course, uh, if your game stinks, not like ours, ours smells like success, try some Adventure Sense from oddfishgames.com. They have a plethora of scents that will make your in-game experience a whole lot more pleasurable or painful if you choose the wrong one. Check them out at oddfishgames.com. They also make the shine system, so if you're a writer like myself, only you want to do it much gooder, uh, check out their shine system. And uh, as promised, their Kickstarter is going live here in just a few days. I went ahead and tweeted out a link, uh, so if you want to get on that notification list, uh, check it out, How to RPG with your cat. Uh, tonight, we are leaving Freckland, uh, but first, let's introduce you to the cast. We will start with David first. David, who are you? Who are you playing? Hi, I'm David, and <laughs> tonight I am playing Zadar. So I've been Zadar for this entire soap opera. Uh, what Zadar is, is an enigma. He's sometimes male, sometimes female. So anyway, been female a long time now. Been female a long time. So uh, yeah, so you never know where what it'll be when we touch down next. Uh, I am also on the uh, <laughs> Calamity campaign, both A side and B side. I play Crow and Ingve, and you can also catch me on Between the Rolls most of the time. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, muted. Damn it. Uh, <laughs> Caitlin is not here today. Uh, she is starting graduate school, so she might not reappear at all on the radar. Uh, last but certainly not least, our producer, normally behind the camera, tonight in front and behind the camera, uh, assuming her audio is good, which I'm always concerned, but I don't have to be. Carrie, who are you? Who do you play? I'm Carrie. I play Camille, a uh, necromancer who likes coffee and cheese, and right now I'm feeling guilty because I OD'd my dog on medicine for her fear of storms, and she's barfing everywhere. Oh, oh poor um, Steve. No, no, well, Trixie. Not Steve. Oh, Trixie. Trixie. Trixie doesn't oh. give a shit about those storms. Yeah, Steve doesn't care. Yeah, Steve's a dude. He doesn't care. Uh, folks, as I said, we are in Cacophony. These guys started way down here uh, in their urban selection. Uh, a lot of time, a lot of time spent in Cacophony. It was originally designed as an urban scenario. Uh, after leaving the city, uh, they took a job in Telosia. After leaving Telosia, uh, they discovered a cloud giant mansion. And now they have landed in Frecklin. Uh, if you missed the uh, last episode, it was a harrowing journey. Uh, just a reminder to folks out there, getting there is half the fun for you young DMs. You can really, really, really kick the shit out of your players uh, by putting them out in the middle of nowhere with no food and a lot of aggressors. Uh, as I stated <laughs> before, they... Uh, met their former friend, Oric the Stinky, uh, leader of some of Freckland's major hitters, uh, just in the nick of time, as a matter of fact. Uh, we nearly lost Caitlin's character 
<laughs> really almost really lost close. Her. Uh, and the other two did not fare much better. Uh, but now they are uh, fed, watered, wined, coffeed in the case of Camille. Uh, and their friend and, I don't know, uh, Lyft driver, uh, Aerosmith, is ready to go. He has found a new friend in the form of a witch uh, that they met initially. And she is decided that she will not stay. She will leave Nebby in charge of diplomatic relations. She is going to go with you guys. Uh, so Oric, being the man of myth, legend, and many, many wives, uh, has gathered together the last of his coffee for Camille uh as as somewhat of an atonement even though i did point out last time that she never asked if he was married that's true uh, Camille. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but you know if you got five wives why do you need to collect another one there's seven days in a week uh yeah, and there with you that, go. <laughs> Ar aerosmith has packed everything uh suki the witch is uh smaller uh so the largest person we got in this uh craft is of course caitlin's character followed by zadar uh with five people it's gonna be whew, a wee bit on the cramp side but uh you will survive aerosmith has plotted the direction uh he's thinking maybe 25 feet over the white caps in the ocean uh so it's going to be that seems really low it is that, really low. That it is, is low. It's going to be low, but it's going to be warmer than way high up. Uh, he has surmised that uh, your original arrival was caused by the cold air atop the cumulus and strata clouds, uh, and that's what caused the plummeting. So he assumes that if he stays lower, uh, they will be able to maintain a greater distance. Uh, he has also done the ciphering in his head. He believes that Orc has given him more than enough food and water, uh, although you do have a bucket on his string. So if you need water or if you need to remove human refuse, uh, you can do that because it is going to be a waterborne adventure from here on out as you head to the Grand Academy and hopefully meet with your old friend Mortimer J. Sneed and his charge Zephyr. They're kind of like Batman and Robin. Well, I wave to Oric and I say, it could have been so wonderful, but thank you for the coffee. <laughs> my dear, my dear, have a safe trip. I wish you only the best. And remember, if you want the job, there's always room in Oric's tent for you. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> Nebby is looking much better today uh, as the sun Hidden behind clouds is probably at its zenith. Uh, you lift off uh, Suki the Witch and you three, along with uh, Aerosmith, head up into the clouds uh, and then promptly down. Uh, he's, uh, he, on the advice of Suki, is going to try and follow the coastline, the southern coastline, uh, hopefully to avoid the dragon that you guys heard and he saw because uh, that is your major number one threat at this moment in time. Uh, anything you guys need to do before you say au revoir? Uh, can, uh, can we ask it, if there's any like waterborne creatures between here and there that can jump up and get us? <laughs> you know, something like a leviathan or kraken or something. <laughs> Never heard of them. Never heard of them. Giant octopus. So is uh, oh, maybe looking like cool. a, looking like Snake Plissken now with his new eye patch and all that. Uh, he does have his eye patch. He has won back his father's axe, the axe used by a frost giant child. Uh, any other questions before you heave ho? No, no <clears throat> other questions. Just bid them uh, farewell and thank you. <laughs> uh, day one, uh, the trip includes uh, Aerosmith pointing out. Uh, that you're going to have to take turns steering at night. So including watch, such as it is, uh, each of you will be responsible for steering. 
Suki introduces you to something that has been in her family forever. Uh, and it is a small rock submerged in a bronze pan with a cylindrical piece of metal. Uh, and no matter what you do to it, the metal always returns to an area off to your right. So she's hurt um, Viking. Yes, it is a compass. So uh, right. it goes off magnetic north. So as long as you keep magnetic north to your right, uh, you should be okay. Uh, Aerosmith uh, knows that near the last couple days, you're going to have to head a little bit north uh, to hit these small, tiny, minute island. Uh, day one passes uneventfully. Uh, which is a huge plus. You are about 25 feet off the white caps, uh, and the seas, seas are looking a little bit frosty. Uh, you do have land to your right, uh, filled with high pine trees and other conifers. Uh, and uh, to the left, big, ugly ocean. Uh, somewhere across the way is uh, the land of the elves. <clears throat> so day one, <clears throat> there are three of you uh, that can take over for Aerosmith. Uh, who wants first? Who wants second? And who wants third watch? I'll go first. Fair enough. D12 against me. Well, fooey. Oh, there it is. Uh, eight. You seem to uh, stay on course. Uh, Zadar, did you want second or third? Yeah, I'll take second. D12. 12. <laughs> Ouch. Uh, give me a D6. Okay. <laughs> Five. Ooh. We're five days off course. Don't I will be that. green. I don't want to give them my hands. Yeah. Uh, you guys wake up at first light, uh, and Aerosmith is muttering to himself. It appears that there's more ocean than land underneath you. You have gone south off course. Uh, he redirects you successfully and continues to follow the line. Uh, day two, Saluki is pointing out, oh, that's where the Crator lived, you know. Oh, far off in the distance, you'll see south. Uh, and who wants to uh, roll a D4 for weather on day two? I will. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> One. Clear, clear blue sky. Uh, lucky you. Uh, hang on just a second. What is that? Oh, that's your fan. That's our fan. <laughs> Sorry, hot flash. Uh, it is warm here in Indiana. Uh, day two is filled with, uh, like I said, nonsensical information from uh, Suki. Uh, you know, everybody give me a perception check. Uh, 14. Nothing unusual. Birds, stuff like that. Uh, standard flora fauna. No uh, intruders of any kind. Uh, night two. Are you guys keeping the same watch schedule? Sure. Sure. <laughs> D12, Camille. Uh, six. Uh, one. So, okay. Uh, Zadar. I'm a good sailor. Yeah. Eleven. Five. Uh, of course, Caitlin. Okay. Uh, start of day three. Uh, you guys seem to be traveling right along the coast. Aerosmith is in good moods. Uh, Suki, uh, seems to be chipper. Uh, she's pointing out that you're coming close to 
excuse me, her lands, uh, there is a beautiful waterfall uh, leading into the ocean. Uh, and as you see it, uh, you can see fish diving off the cliff, uh, trying to avoid bears oh. uh, who wow. are, are just waiting for them to get downstream for some reason. I don't know. I, I didn't flesh that Same one out. <laughs> uh, Suki points out that you are now in her homeland. Everything should be safe. Uh, does anybody remember something else about this location? Yeah, a giant rock or something. There you go. Uh, well, you mean ROC? Yeah. Well, there is that. Uh, however, as you guys round the corner, let's see if Caitlin's character remembers. Isn't this where I about got my ass handed to me by that frost giant? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> you see the rocky uh, subset of the Freckland landscape uh, because it's high cliffs. It's like Dover, only they aren't white. Uh, and as you round the corner, there she be, the tower of the frost giant. You see a young frost giant, quite familiar to you. Uh, motherfucker. Skipping rocks. Does he see you? I hope not. Uh, with a nat 20, he spots you and starts of yelling he does. for dad. Uh, who wants to d12 against me? Can we all go? All right. <laughs> Seven. Uh, do you guys want to do anything? I want to get away from the coast. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to engage. Uh, Aerosmith says, aye, aye, Captain, and uh, pitches the boat uh, to the port side, or the vessel to the port side, uh, just as the father comes up. He sees it, uh, picks <laughs> okay. up a boulder. Oh, crap. Uh, one Camille, two Zadar, uh, three the tiefling, and four the vessel. Three, aiming at Caitlin yet again. Oh, God, they don't, really don't like her. An 18 on the roll adds six. <laughs> yeah, I think that would hit her. Yeah, yeah that, would hit her. that hits her. Uh, I got to see how much damage this thing will do. No! <laughs> Crap. 4d10 plus 6. Oh, Jesus. And it connected. Oh, it was plus 9 to hit. So 27 to hit her. Yeah, that's going to hit. <laughs> uh, not great rolls. Oh, oh my God. Um, that, that's pretty good. Uh, 22 damage to Caitlin. Oh. Honey, you just need to lay down. <laughs> She's laying down all right, because uh, she's got, what, 45 or something like that? Yeah, something like that. Well, I've got yeah. 44. So she's probably got somewhere around 50. So she's hurt. Uh, the second rock will be at disadvantage. Same roll. Uh, two, Zadar. Uh, that is a 6 plus 9, 15. That misses. Underneath the boat as uh, Aerosmith hurriedly, while Suki is yelling at him, uh, veers off. You are now off the coast, uh, much better shape than the cat is right now. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you get away. Caitlin is bleeding. She can touch herself and heal herself. Uh, Aerosmith is going to give a wide berth to this frost giant. Uh, you can see him off in the distance, you know, doing the sand uh, sand creatures. Uh, yeah, the Tuscan Raider stuff. The Tuscan Raider look, yeah. Not that he could see. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> you get away. Day three comes to an end. Same setup. D12, Camille. Two. Uh, give me a d6. Five. 
There are D12. Okay. Nine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> same thing. Camille rolled a two. D6, please. Oh. Uh, three. And Caitlin. Hmm. Ties go to the runner, 11s. Uh, you guys wake up. Uh, you're still off the coast. Uh, you know, you're not following it perfectly, but you're off the coast. Um, Aerosmith does not seem to give two shits about this. Doesn't seem uh, that this is going to be a problem at all. Uh, however, you also notice the edge of land is here from here on out it's going to be nothing but big blue ocean uh the end of day four comes camille d12 five or uh zadar d12 yep seven uh seven uh tie goes to the runner and yep. Caitlin, uh, day four ends dead on course. Uh, Aerosmith checks Suki's uh, device, strange, magical, arcane device, uh, and is fairly certain that you have remained on course. There are, of course, notches on the bowl that allow you to go ahead and gauge everything appropriately. Uh, day five uh begins uh everybody perception check 15. uh 12. you guys are flying so low that you can see a pod of dolphins down below oh, that's uh, cool. they seem to have spotted you and they are racing you do you want to tell aerosmith anything yeah dude there's dolphins down there can i throw them some jerky if they'll eat it <laughs> I, I throw some jerky over to see if they're hungry there goes uh, our food it's me. just a piece <laughs> uh four tie goes to the runner some of the dolphins uh stop to see what you threw out there give me another perception check you two uh same thing 14. one not 14. Yeah. uh camille you are leaning over watching the dolphins kind of duke it out for this uh zadar you see something else in the water it's kind of shiny uh but it's a flittering light uh and at one one brief second you're fairly confident it was a human so what's okay. up Hey, Caitlin. I teleported in. <laughs> nice. yeah. She's conscious. <laughs> That's right. You got hit by the frost giant again. Uh, so, yeah, you see what you think is a human. Oh, okay. I relay that to Aerosmith, a point. <laughs> that Aerosmith, looks like a human. Aerosmith does not see it. He sees something else. So, as you guys hover 25 feet above the ocean, uh, he sees another set of creatures coming in from the uh, west. Okay, I look west. Uh, it appears to be dolphins with horns. Oh, oh okay. Narwhals. Yep, narwhals. Uh, and they are going in after the dolphins. Hey, oh, look, uh, Daphne, you guys are now past the edge of Frecklin, 25 feet up, day five of your journey. Uh, Suki the witch has joined you, and she has a magical arcane device that we know of as a compass. Uh, so it uh, looks like the narwhals are coming after the dolphins. Does anybody want to do anything? Uh, Daphne, you are completely healed by now. Um, Although you do have a loose tooth because you took a hit for took a bullet to the face. Yeah, twenty-eight. That's all what happens, man. 
<laughs> it almost got Zadar, but yeah, it was close. <laughs> but yeah, it hit you. Kill me a, off when I'm not around. <laughs> it, hit, it hit you with a 27 on its throw. So, uh, narwhals? Uh, you've got narwhals versus dolphins. They are coming together, speeding towards each other. Oh, they're going to fight each other? That is what it appears. That's so sad. That's kind of hard choice. I like both. <laughs> Narwhal. So. Sorry. Dolphins are kind of dicks. <laughs> so, do you guys, you guys like dolphins, hang? but they're actually jerks. Yeah, they kind of <laughs> like, are. <laughs> so do you guys want to hang out and watch or just keep going? Ah, we got to get out here. And keep going. <laughs> Not going to make friends with the narwhals. One of the narwhals leaps high. <laughs> as oh. High as it can. You can see the ivory horn extending out from its head. Uh, only a natural 20 will get the bottom of your vessel. Good lord. <laughs> The 17. Ooh, that uh, was the, close. <laughs> the horn almost clips it. Uh, and you guys yell out to Aerosmith to pick up the pace, pick up the Get pace, the pick up out. the pace. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Can I like cast, what's it, thaumaturgy, whatever, to do some type of fun lights on the water? With, sure. With, what's, with, yeah, yeah we're just, wait. The rain should be okay. Right, because we're like right near them. So like where the narwhals are, I want there to be like some type of like rainbow lights going off around them because they're just magical. Uh, <laughs> sure, we can do that. Just looking it up, thirty feet. Yes, you can cast it down there. All right. Uh, so you're you're causing a rainbow to appear over their heads. Just like like little rainbows. So they're just like 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 lights casting off the water. Okay. Like yeah. Disco basically. Light. Yeah, uh, yeah, basically, yeah. Uh, green like will a whole be the party dolphin, for them. <laughs> and orange will be the narwhals. Uh, the dolphins are not bothered by the lights. The narwhals are confused. So if there is a throwdown, looks like the dolphins are going to have the advantage. But that is not something you will know because you continue to sail. Uh, somebody give me a d4 for weather please i will emile's the weather girl four bad news oh. it had to end at some point no <laughs> what very cold snow moving in from the north uh it is going to be very chilly in uh the bunker you call the balloon uh, at the end of day five, uh, Daphne, you drew third watch. Uh, does any does everybody want to keep their same watches, or do we want to change? Yeah, we'll keep the same watch. Camille, D twelve against me. Uh, seven. Uh, Zanar, D twelve. <laughs> uh, three. Right, well, you roll that D six. <laughs> you rolled a 12, huh? I certainly did. Okay. Oh, man. Since Caitlin <laughs> said rainbow, I'm using my rainbow dice. One. <laughs> yeah, that's not bad. Uh, Kate or Daphne, D12 against me. Nine. Ah, very good. Uh, you guys wake up on day six. Uh, you are lower. Uh, the Ooh. cold air has really hampered uh, the mechanics of your uh, craft or Aerosmith Don't craft. we have fire that we can <clears throat> use? Well, there is a fire in the center, but that's what keeps the balloon up. Uh, and the cold winds are really, really bad. Uh, somebody D4 for today for me, please. All right, my luck is gone. Somebody else better do it. Okay. Two. Uh, it's cloudy, so that's okay. good. Uh, however, you guys all notice that there are uh, what appear to be large chunks of ice floating below you. Who wants to D12 to see if any of them are dangerous? I will. Uh, <laughs> Ajax, help me out. Uh, eight. Uh, they are not 
25 feet tall at this point in time. However, everybody give me a perception check. 19. 18. 11. Uh, <laughs> nope. Uh, you are busy watching the skies, Daphne. Camille and Zadar on one of these icebergs uh, is a family of polar bears. They seem to be enjoying a nice seal sandwich. Hmm. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yum. They are amused as you guys pass <laughs> over them uh, are they I mean, doing the bear wave you know <laughs> they're, 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 they've got coke bottles right. up for you oh they got coke bottles okay there you go <laughs> uh day six you guys each spot uh more icicles maybe you see a guy named jack hanging off of a table you aren't really sure uh, <laughs> let us do nighttime for day six okay uh, camille who Hey, Jax, put your nose on this one. Uh, eight. Zadar. Nine. Oh. No. <laughs> Two. D6. Deuces. All right. Oh, five. Uh, Daphne, D12. Eight. Oh, we lost Stephanie. Oh, <laughs> there you are. You're back. I want to hit our mute and I hit video. Nice. I'm um, sorry. I rolled 11. Right. D12. Yeah. Very good. Uh, you wake up the morning of day seven and you, uh, you, 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 you kind of fine, maybe, I guess. Okay. Uh, there's, there's still a lot of icebergs out there. Who wants to D4 for the weather report? You want me to do it again? Yeah. Uh, three. It's raining. Oh. Ah, oh, damn it. It was going to be fine unless it rained. Uh, yeah. Zadar, give me a D8. I'm sorry. Give me a D12. D12? Okay. Mm -hmm. Ten. It's going to rain for ten, for ten hours. fucking hours. It is damn it, Frank. You miserable. do this to me every time. <laughs> uh, everybody roll a con check with that one. Oh, my God. You are headed into a storm. Uh, con? Uh, let's see. Blah, Eight. Blah, blah. Eight? Uh, Twelve. Twelve? Eleven. Sorry, the air mattress is blowing up next to <laughs> me. No, you're fine. Uh, Camille, uh, you are at disadvantage as you have the chills. Uh, you're sneezing, you're sniffling, and you just cannot shake the cold weather. Uh, you will roll at disadvantage for the night check. Uh, evening of the 7th. Uh, fortunately, you don't see anything. Camille, D12 at disadvantage. Wow, one. Uh, D6. Four. Oh. Oh, like uh, oh. Z Z Zadar. Uh, that would be a big old four. D6. Uh, one. Uh, Daphne, D12. <clears throat> Four. Very good. Uh, day eight. Ooh. Uh, Camille, give me a con check. Somebody else roll for weather, please. Am I rolling at disadvantage? Uh, uh no, straight up con check this time. Three. Uh, 16. Uh, you've shaken the cold even though it is pouring rain. So I'm drinking iced coffee. 
Again. So we're on the Atlantic, basically. <laughs> Essentially, you are off the coast of Ireland waiting to hit a fucking uh, icicle. Uh, day eight. Uh, everybody give me a, a perception check, please. Okay. Twelve. Twenty, not natural. Nothing. What was that? Sorry, what am I doing? Ro perception, uh, perception check. check. That's it. Okay, sorry to check. <clears throat> wow, four. Uh, Daphne, yet again, you, <laughs> you missed the aquatic life. A pod of whales are going past you, headed north. Uh, to the best of your knowledge, uh, there are ten of them, including calves. So, oh, wow. uh, you can safely assume that there are three calves. Uh, okay. So, uh, a very pleasant sight, something that you have not seen. Uh, is it our D12 against me? Let's see if they spray the underside of the vessel. Eleven. Well, <laughs> nice. Uh, just below the uh, basket, the water just erupts and sprays out. Uh, spraying you guys with water, but just tiny droplets. Again, not something that you've ever seen before. Kind of mm -hmm. cool. Uh, this happens uh, probably from the lead cow or bull, whatever it's called, uh, to protect his herd. Uh, they continue their way. You continue cutting perpendicular. Uh, this was day eight. Uh, go ahead and D12, Camille. It's nighttime again. 11. Zadar. 12. Uh, Daphne, D12. Do, 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 do. Seven. Uh, give me a D six, Daphne. No, no. Two. Fair enough. Uh, day nine. Who's rolling for weather? Somebody else did. <laughs> Daphne, uh, you do it. I'll do I've it. I've been rolling bad D weather. D four, Daphne. <clears throat> three oh <laughs> the third day of rain continues and you hear aerosmith we could be in trouble oh no <laughs> what now i think we have a leak what's the hub bub? oh no and the balloon yep uh, he points up in between the jets of fire. Everybody give me a perception, or give everybody give me an investigation check. Uh, Sixteen. Uh, Fourteen. Uh, yeah, you both see the hole. Oh, <laughs> there, great. There is a hole in the balloon, and you are starting to lose altitude. Uh, as you guys look around, everybody give me perception checks. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. God damn it. <laughs> Snooky doesn't have mend. <laughs> 15. I think I do. Yes, I do. Okay. What's the range on that? It's touch. I think. Touch. <laughs> you want to climb up into the balloon? Well, don't I just have to? I would have to like, because there's. Can she just touch so the balloon and the it just and just touch it? Yeah, you can climb up the ropes. Okay. What well, do you want me to roll for that? Of course Acro he does. Acrobatics. Fourteen. Uh, you get to okay. the top. Uh, touch. You successfully mend the hot air balloon. Climb down. <laughs> oh, Acrobatics no. Acrobatics again. Acrobatics oh, again. 
Oh, not good. Uh, five. Slides right off and drops 20 feet into oh. the water. Oh, oh. no. Oh. I'm small. Somebody help me. <laughs> you are small, and you're going to take... Can I help? Can I help? Yeah, you can watch her fall. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can use my, my, my tail. Grab my tail! <laughs> Six hit points of damage as you smack the cold ocean. Arr, Zadar yeah. right away throws out a rope. <laughs> Here is how we will do this. It's quite foggy and misty from the rain. Yeah. Uh, Zadar you go ahead and roll a straight up d20. Camille, mm -hmm. you roll a straight up d20. Oh boy. I'm rubbing it on my cat's ass. 12. 17. Uh, you see the rope. Give me a perception check. Cat's ass again. <laughs> Fifteen. I'm sorry? Fifteen. Sadar and Daphne, perception checks. Uh, perception? Uh, la 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 la. Twelve. Uh, Twenty-one. Uh, Daphne, Zadar, Camille, all three of you notice a very large, very dark shape headed right towards Camille. Oh, no. Watch uh, out for the shape! Camille, the, <laughs> the rope is dangling, uh, and you begin to swim. So give me a survival check. Oh, Jesus. Uh, 19. Uh, you are almost to the rope when the dark shape eases in front of the rope. The rope comes up over the side. Uh, from this position, everybody knows what this is. It is a ship. Whoa. Uh, okay. Very high mast. Who wants to D12 against me? Oh, I'll do it. Roll high. Chaos. Where do I want to roll low? <laughs> 10? I said roll high. <laughs> Two. Uh, the rope slithers across the front mast uh, and sail of this three-masted ship. Uh, a flurry of activity covers the deck as swabbies and crew personnel uh, move about. You can clearly hear man overboard <clears throat> by now. Uh, Camille, roll a d4, please. Uh, where'd you go? There it is. Three. Three ropes uh, land in close proximity to you. The rope used by Zadar is kind of sliding up the sail and mast out of your reach, but you do have one of three ropes to choose from. The ship has slowed, but of course it hasn't come to a complete stop, uh -huh. so you might get dragged a little bit. Ships Do you want to grab stop. the ropes <laughs> or let it pass? So the rope from the Aerosmith is out of reach. Correct. So I have to pick one of the other two. Mm -hmm. mm. Three. Other three. Well, I guess I take one of those. Okay, hit it. Fourteen. You grab a hold of one of the rope and you get yanked. Uh, as the vessel is still slowing, uh, but it has not stopped. Uh, everybody hears through the mist, I got him, I got him, I got him. Uh, it's a kind of a strange twangy voice. You can't really discern the region. Is this the uh, south? Uh, not, not quite. It's a, it's a rough voice. Uh, but you feel yourself being hoisted rather abruptly well, up the God. side of the ship. 
give me an investigation check to see if you see the name of the vessel. That would be seven. Uh, you do not see the nameplate. Uh, Zadar, Daphne, perception checks. So many perception checks. Uh, perception, so. Uh, oh, 17 for 22 one. for Zadar. Uh, you guys notice that your associate is being hauled up rather quickly. The figures on the deck all appear to be humanoid in appearance oh uh, with a distinct difference uh, a few more pulls camille and you are up to the edge a figure with a wide toothy grin and horns atop their bovine head oh no greet you and the individual yells out i got me a kid <laughs> uh, the uh, other sailors uh, surround him and you can tell you are on a ship filled with minotaur uh, some of them have eye patches some of them have bulging nose rings some of them have uh, bulging or uh, pierced uh, ears and one a very large minotaur with a peg leg approaches and his horns, one is shattered, uh, but both horns are encrusted in jewels. Clearly, this dude looks like he is a bad ass. Uh, Zadar and Daphne, the vessel is going the same direction as you. Uh, what would you like to do as your associate appears to have been captured by bull pirates? Bull pirates. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Um, hmm. Well, there's a couple things that I could do. <laughs> Minotaur is humanoid, and Zadar can go one size up. So, I mean, he could try to infiltrate the ship. Do they not Minotaur. find me attractive? I feel like they would. Well, yeah. They can't see. I it. was going to make a bad joke, but. <laughs> um. <laughs> They, they can't see you and Zadar. All they saw was a body fall from the sky. Because it is still raining, and it is misty, because uh, it's the cold north. Uh, right. So, so you guys are kind of, you guys are kind of hidden. Nobody has noticed the rope sliding across the sails. I cast darkness. Okay, where do you cast it at? Yeah. Wait, can I cast it to them? Uh, what's that? 60 feet. Range? How far 60. away are they? Uh, you are 25 feet up. Oh, they're below us. Correct. They're on a ship. You're in a balloon. Yeah, can I cast it on their ship? Sure. What's the uh, radius? It is... Whoa. Um... <clears throat> radius... It doesn't tell me it says range area, but I thought there was a thing that said beyond that. Oh, 15 feet. 15 feet. Uh, Camille, everything goes dark as one of the bovine hoists you oh, up geez. and over the side and land you squarely and firmly on the deck. Uh, everything is dark. Uh, Why now is there, dark? there is complete chaos. Uh, and the gruff voice of what you presume to be the captain uh, begins to yell out uh, to somebody called Theseus. Uh, Theseus! Theseus! Magic! Magic! Uh, a moment later, the darkness is dispelled. Uh, you, Camille, find yourself surrounded by Minotaur. What would you like to do? Are they all men? Or are there any women here? Uh, you see some with nipples. <laughs> I, <guess>. I, uh, <laughs> I say thanks for and, and, and those teats are all pierced, by the way. Uh, it's like a xylophone if you want to play it. Oh my god. god. <laughs> yeah, they go like half like ribbon cow between. Teats look like, right? They're all in one place. Yeah. Okay. Um, wow. <laughs> 
I, I thank them for saving me and I ask if they could hoist me up so I could catch that other rope. Uh, uh oh. Son, what are you doing out here in the middle of the ocean? <laughs> and as you ask to be hoisted up, they all look up and they see the underside of the balloon along with the rope skipping over the first mast into the second mast. Uh, and as you look up, and as Zadar and Daphne look down, you spot a minotaur in the crow's nest who gets the bright idea of grabbing the uh, rope, huh? <laughs> grabs the rope and begins to wind it around the mast. Oh, uh, shit. The balloon lurches. Uh, Daphne, Zadar, uh, and uh, Aerosmith need to make dex checks. Okay. Uh, Aerosmith's okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, Zadar will be okay. 18 plus, uh, yeah, seven. So he's good. <laughs> Daphne? You? Daphne falls on her face. <laughs> oi! Oi! Captain, there's more of them up here. <laughs> I go, hey, hey, and I poke him in his knee. <laughs> Everything in the balloon goes dark. <laughs> the captain looks down. Boy, are those your people up there? Okay. First off, I'm not a boy. And yes, those are my people. I need to get back up there. I was trying to be nice. I just need to get up there. Uh, the Minotaur whips out a saber with a jeweled handle and says... Be they friend or be they foe. That's up to you. Hmm. Oh, no. That. <laughs> That's a good answer. Me book. Uh, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> Call your friends down. Okay. Uh, at least Zadar will go. I'll, I'll slide down the rope hey, and hey. head on to the crow's nest. Did you turn yourself into a minotaur? No. Okay. No, I did not. Did not. Uh, but Daphne, Daphne has horns, though. They might like her. Yeah, they might like her. Once Daphne gets off her ass, uh, she did you want to slide down the rope as well? Uh, Aerosmith and uh, the witch... No fucking way are they going down there. Yeah. Well, they need uh, to navigate up there. Zadar and Daphne, give me acrobatics checks, please. Okay. As you slide down the rope. Uh, yeah. Uh, 23 for Zadar. Twenty-one. Uh, yeah, you I rolled slide. a nat 20. Woo -hoo, nice. Some fancy skills. I'm like a you stripper got... coming down. I'm like, <laughs> Dude, you're hanging on, hanging she's on by your spinning feet. around the, the, the <laughs> rope as she's coming down. Uh, and, and yeah. The guy's like, still off. <laughs> uh, Camille, you notice the captain. I kick him and say, don't get any ideas. That's my friend. <laughs> yeah, your friend has horns. Be she minotaur like me? She's, she's got a, skills. Well, That's all I can a say. Mount Minotaur, if she be. Uh, as you guys climb down, I assume you climb down the rigging. Uh -huh. There you go. Plop down. Uh, obviously, Daphne's going to garner the king's share of attention because she does have horns. Uh, they are familiar with tieflings. Uh, the captain introduces himself as Montross del Rio. Mm. Uh, uh, Zadar gives him a hearty salute and says, Captain, is just like, may I present Camille, uh, Daphne, and I be Zadar. We are the Adventurers Three. <laughs> ah, where be ye headed? Uh, we're headed to, does, does the Grand Academy have an uh, island have a name? It does not. It hmm. does not. Okay. Uh, we're... I tell them we're headed to uh, a small island. Uh, we're, we're, we're trying to find our way there. We are actually come from a frozen land called Freckland. 
Uh, home of the giants are a yeah. bitch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi, they are, but they've got big heads. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they do. And multiple wives. Camille throws in. Well, that's the yeah. Uh, that, no. That's the barbarian. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we be headed to the Grand Academy if you're familiar with that. That's and I say going. that is exactly where we are going. <laughs> ah, tis a small world. Uh, is there anybody left in your craft? Uh, our pilot or helmsman uh, and his assistant. Uh, Unfortunately, the the craft has to stay aloft. So. <clears throat> I would assume so. An interesting craft as it may be. Uh, would you care to dine with me or are you in a hurry? We would, we'd love to dine We're with you. We're both going the same way. Ah, uh, Cassius, we need food. We need sustenance. Uh, as you look around, everybody just roll straight d20. Uh, high roll will determine who sees the Cassius first. Uh, I got a seven. Sixteen. She's already eating. She must have seen him. Right. Yeah, yeah. Daphne's in the galley. Zadar, Cessius is uh, called to, and a dark, shadowy figure comes out near the cabin region. Uh, this individual also bears horns. It is a male, uh, and it is a tiefling. Oh. So Theseus appears to be dressed in warlock robes. Uh, and emotions for you come over like Morpheus. Right. <laughs> uh, Theseus leads you uh, down below the rear deck or the aft deck uh, into uh, what you consider the captain's quarters. It's kind of lush. Now, keeping in mind these are Minotaur, so the vessel itself might be a caravel, but it is a wide caravel built for the Minotaur by the Minotaur. As you go in out of the rain, uh, the captain begins to bellow, uh, yells for the crow's nest to keep an eye on the balloon, make sure it is not in any distress, uh, before he hobbles over on his peg leg and also enters. Uh, he reaches over, grabs a towel, as you guys are seated by Theseus, uh, the tiefling warlock. Uh, he uses magic and produces food uh, for you. A very vast substance. Uh, some of it is tiefling based, others minotaur based, and some of it is uh, standard food. Uh, there's a small pig with an apple in its mouth. Nice. Uh, and then the captain uh, reaches in to where he keeps his wine bottles, uh, examines several, uh, looks at the fare, picks one, comes over. Again, he's hobbling because he's got the peg leg. Uh, sits down and he pours wine in each of your goblets. The goblets are silver. Each has jewels. They are of exquisite nature. They do not appear to be minotaur. They appear to be dwarven based. Um, they don't appear to be magical at this point in time. Uh, Theseus sits at the foot of the table. The captain sits at the head of the table. Two of you can sit on one side, one on the other. Uh, and Captain Del Rio says, tell me a story. What brings you here? Uh, uh, Zadar speaks up and is like, Captain, we have such a great tale. <laughs> and I start to, to and I regale point him at my about tail some of our... That. Yeah. She's like, your tail, you look! <laughs> the Tiefling smiles in appreciation. Okay. I tell him like our greatest hits. <laughs> Persuade me. Okay. Uh, let's see. Persuade, uh, persuasion. <laughs> Sean Connery is here. Uh, you better make it a good roll. <laughs> 16. Uh, he's mildly entertained. Okay, all right. Uh, I'm not a bard, but hey. <laughs> I, I tell him about my disappointing love life. Uh, persuasion. We'll see how this goes. 
Nineteen. Oh, nice. Uh, he's cordial. He's not insulting. Uh, he uh, points out that you never know what's around the next wave, my dear. <laughs> uh, he goes ahead and explains that he is a standard shipping uh, import-export kind of individual. Uh, he had some items from somebody called Thibbet that he needed delivered to the Grand Academy. Of course. Along with several other items. I comment uh, that he seems to be very successful. The ship's captain or? The ship Thibbet. captain. Oh. Uh, we do our best. We are a seafaring <laughs> culture. Hi, Hannah. Uh, <laughs> we are a seafaring culture and we <laughs> enjoy uh, the life on the waves. Uh, the food, everybody roll constitution checks. See how you like it. 16. Okay. Uh, yeah, 16. Daphne? Wait, constitution check? Mm -hmm. literally also 16 this is so weird <laughs> uh, the, the food is magically delicious it's, it's been prepared by a freaking leprechaun oh, that's right. <laughs> uh, as you guys go on he explains that he's been to several uh, ports of call uh, and he and his crew are due to stand down after dropping off the items at the Grand Academy uh, he points out that most of them are mundane items such as books uh not relegated to seafare so he's not really that interested in it uh along with a few other items uh and points out he goes i don't i don't suppose you guys know of a man named sneed do you mortimer fact, we do <laughs> just says sneed on the box he is our very good friend oh uh, is he at the grand academy yes Yes, yes, he ah, is. Well, and he this, will tell you repeatedly. <laughs> well, then this will not be a wasted trip. That is the good news. Uh, everybody give me a perception check. 17. <laughs> uh, 20, not natural. Three. Uh, Daphne, you and the <laughs> tiefling warlock are enamored with oh, each oh, other oh, as oh, you oh, share oh. special moments. Uh, Camille and Zadar, uh, you hear a commotion outside on the deck. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> do we need to worry about that going on out there? I do not know. Uh, he gets up. Uh, you can tell he's a little bit arthritic, and he heads towards the door down a short hallway. Do you wish to follow him? Uh, yes. Yeah, I asked Captain if I could take leave with him. So. Sure, sure. I want uh, to back you, got... you up. I feel bad for your knee. Uh, it's, uh, that shark ate well that day. <laughs> uh, you guys go outside, and apparently the commotion is coming from the crow's nest. You notice that the balloon is kind of pulling ahead, oh. uh, and it's putting a strain on the mast. Oh, and okay. uh, the captain turns to Odd Even, Odd uh, Camille, and says, uh, how fast does that vessel go? Um, I really don't know. <clears throat> Would you like well, me to try to talk to Aerosmith? Uh, if you'd like. Oi, prick. Slow it down. Uh, uh, you see the... Uh, facial features of Aerosmith as he leans over the side. He goes, I can't slow down. I'll drop into the water. I I, I have to cut loose. Are you guys coming with me or not? Um, Wait, you well, should, right? I don't know. You don't know, Daphne. You're talking with uh, yeah. Thusius. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you, guys are, you guys are playing tails underneath the table. Well, um, considering how difficult it would probably be to get back up there i would let yeah, him go forward and we'll just meet him there yeah tell him we'll meet him at the academy are you just going to assume that he will take on passengers 
Oh, That's oh, I'll ask the cat. Yes. <laughs> Politely ask the captain. Yeah, I tell him what our what our pilot has said, and um, we have a choice. We could either uh, either ask for passage on your ship, which we I, I have I have a modest amount of money, but I could pay for for passage, or um, yes, we, we could we we could scale back up to the thing, the the airship. You seem like nice people. If you want a ride, we will give you a discounted ride because we are only three days out. Or I'm sorry, four days out. Four? I thought it was going to be 11. Uh, by aircraft. Ugh. <laughs> because that is why he's pulling forward. Right. So if yeah. you want to make it on day 11... Up you climb. Okay. If you want to make it on day thirteen, what stay do we want to do? That's that's up to you, Camille, because you're you were the one that suffered the most on on the trip up there, up in the airship. Well, how likely are we to be able to grapple back up there? It'll be difficult. Uh, I guess we'll stay down here then. Okay. Uh, Cut them loose. <laughs> uh, we as, wave. Uh, as soon, yeah, as soon as the Minotaur we'll loops, loops on the rope, uh, your hot air balloon lurches forward. Uh, clearly, it makes way better time than the vessel. Yeah. Uh, so uh, if only tonight, we tied it to the base. Uh, tonight, you will be aboard the Horned Demon. Is the name of the ship nice uh and this is day nine uh you do not need to roll you'll be given uh guest quarters they are not very good uh they are adequate to say the least it's better yeah. in freezing uh, on the upper deck up there it is much warmer because it's towards the middle of the ship uh the captain uh tells the crew that they have passengers a speculative huzzah goes up and the captain says not to be touched uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you yeah, will not I'm be the equivalent of a boy so you know, whatever <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. You it might know. be catholic priests you yeah don't know. that's true uh so uh the captain uh, nods to you, gives you uh, a tour of the vessel. It is a standard trading vessel. It does not take you all the way to the bottom. Uh, but you notice there's a smell. There, there, there's a smell down there. Brown. Uh, no, yeah, no. smells like brown and uh, baby shit yellow. Oh, ew. <laughs> ew. So, uh, <laughs> it, it's a little rough. Uh, but the deck that you guys are on, not bad, not bad at all. Uh, it has several other rooms associated with uh, nautical armory and things of that nature. The captain tells you, do not wander uh, the ship, if you please. You are guests. However, you must obey our rules while aboard. Uh, your room is small, cozy, warm, uh, plenty of extra blankets, uh, and it is clean. So uh, the night will pass uneventfully. Uh, there is a lock on the inside as well as the outside of the door. He does not lock you in. Um, Camille passes you, out and snores. You you are allowed to latch your door. Uh, you will be safe tonight. Uh, morning of the 10th. Who's rolling weather? I'll let somebody oh, well. else do that. Three. <laughs> God damn these dice. <laughs> Rain again. Day four. Camille stays in bed. Uh, and says, I have cramps. Uh, Daphne, uh, there is a knock on the door early in the morning. It is Theseus wanting to know if you would like a personal tour of the vessel. He seems to have taken a shine to you. I like your horns. Did you hear that? Yeah. Um, I guess I flirt back. 
I haven't his, seen uh, another tiefling in so long. You haven't seen one in a while. Yeah. <laughs> his charisma is 15. He is from 30 miles from your hometown. Nice. Uh, so you guys nice. are well aware of the region. Uh, and you enjoy a nice day. Uh, even though it is pouring rain, courtesy of Zadar. Uh, he goes ahead and he shows oh, you a good time uh, with wine and food, Ooh. cheese, shit like that. Uh, Camille, Romance. That's right. He, he's he's bro, he's uh, yeah, he, he's romancing you. That's the best I can come up with. Uh, Camille, you get a good night and a good day's yes. sleep. Uh, Zadar, what would you like to do? You were um, not invited to go with Theseus. <laughs> yeah, of course not. <laughs> be of course not. So, um, I don't know. I guess, uh, you know, if the captain's available, uh, seek counsel with the captain or something like that. Uh, he's a busy man, but uh, he will allow you to walk with him in the rain. Uh, the uh, meteorology issues do not appear to phase him in the least. Uh, mm -hmm. It is quite slick, uh, but you notice he has put an attachment on his peg leg. It looks like a meat tenderizer, so oh, he can nice. actually grip the wooden plank. Uh, as he moves across, every once in a while, you will see Daphne and her new friend, Dussius. Uh, You will not see Camille the entire day because she's just going to fucking sure. sleep in. Uh, that night... Uh, who wants to d12 against me? I will. Eight. Nine. Uh, the rain has turned into a storm. Uh, so, Daphne, do you stick around Theseus and hang out with him at night, or do you return to the cabin with your associates? I'm going to go back with him. Okay. Of course uh, she is. <laughs> As you three, you got, you got a team. Well, are you going back with him or them? Him. Him. Oh, okay. So, yeah, she, she's tramping it out. Uh, that's fine. <laughs> no judgment. No judgment. <laughs> okay. We need more tieflings in this world, you know. That's right. He's a himbo. A girl so, has you know. needs. Uh, so, uh, with the vessel, it uh, pitches and yaws substantially. Uh, it is rough going uh camille and zadar give me constitution saves daphne will there be any extracurricular activity or just uh yes. platonic okay uh the, <laughs> mo the motion uh, of oh the i was ocean gonna make it it's the uh, motion of the ocean very happy uh camille and zadar <laughs> are... 14. okay okay yeah yeah 14 for zadar uh, it's a little rough. Your stomachs are a little bit rolling, uh, and you can hear ungodly tiefling sex noises from somewhere on the ship as their raucous behavior is disconcerting at best, scary at worst. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the heat of their passion warms the inside of the ship. Oh. Uh, oh, so, nice. She so, casts thaumaturgy. <laughs> Out, outside, you can hear lightning strikes, uh, a howling wind. Uh, every once in a while, something collides with the ship, probably an iceberg, uh, just all around inclement weather. As uh, you guys uh, break, uh, as the day breaks on day 11, uh, Daphne, give me a constitution roll. Is her vagina worn out by now? Eight? Uh, he's ready for round seven and eight, but you're kind of tired. Uh, who wants to roll for weather? I'm not. Okay, I'll roll. <laughs> no one wants to be responsible. I appreciate the heat, though. That was nice. Howdy day today. Uh, Daphne, it's been a while for Theseus. <laughs> uh, he, gre he greets you in the morning with uh, hot oatmeal. Aw, that's so cute. Because he's sexy as hell. 
He's like shirtless when he's doing it. I feel like. Oh yeah, it ripples. It has ass. like. I'm sure well, he he's feeding it to her. And and yeah, perfume. but he like you know how like when you're cooking, there's like an apron, but it's only like the half apron. Yes. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yes. Half apron. And a bow tie <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> Not the bow ties on the horns. Oh, that would be so cute. Tapered candles on the horns. Oh, nice. Now you're thinking. There we go. That's yeah. right. There uh, go. So yeah, he's <laughs> another round. Uh, so Daphne, you can stay another day with him, or you can uh, do the walk of shame back to the, back the room to your where you're associated. Please have no shame. Come on. That's yeah, good. no shame. I'd right. like uh, you want to join me and my friends. <laughs> Oh, you guys are about to have a bad day. <laughs> uh, he uh, points out uh, that Captain Del Rio would nope. not appreciate the molestation of your friends. <laughs> uh, so on day 11, uh, you were set to arrive. You still know land in sight. It is cloudy, which is a plus. Uh, what would you guys like to do this fine day? Uh, I'd like to go up to the deck and just look around. Nice. Uh, crystal clear blue waters on a cloudy day. Uh, you do see some aquatic creatures moving about. Um, other than that, not a big deal. Zadar, how about you? Uh, I'll walk up on deck with her. Cool. You know, trying to stay out of the crew's hair. Sure. <laughs> no pun intended. But, uh, yeah. The winds are favorable for them. Uh, they appear to be relaxed. They go about their standard duties of uh, sanding out the scrapings from the captain's uh, meat cleaver. You know, we yeah. should just like get him something rubber to put on there. That just seems sure. Except you guys haven't been south, so there are no rubber tree plants around. Right. Hey, Shirley. Uh, as uh, you, I'm the DM. Stop calling me Shirley. Mm -hmm. uh, as you go on, Daphne, are you spending the day with Magic Michael? Yeah, that's his name. No, it's Thessius. <laughs> oh, Thessius. I was like, I'm so confused. <clears throat> when did his name change? As he's this married to Sophia Vergara. <laughs> uh, are you going to spend the day with him again? It's our last day together. <laughs> no. Oh, you guys are on the yeah. You guys are on the slow ship. Oh, um, I guess I'll <laughs> hang out with my friends. Okay, uh, as you guys are going by, yeah, it, it, it is a nice, easy day. Uh, the crew is very relaxed. Uh, they've come to accept you guys. Uh, they greet you. Uh, everything is hunky dory, and everybody can now fucking roll initiative. Uh oh. <laughs> Right. Knew this couldn't last. <laughs> Thirteen. Uh, let's see. Four. Uh, yeah, ten for Zadar. Fair enough. Uh, the vessel shudders, uh, and the crew starts to look around, uh, somewhat haphazardly. Uh, the captain is not present on deck, nor is Theseus. Uh, but the crew are looking around, and they all look up to the crow's nest. And they got, the minotaur in the crow's nest is looking around, and does he spot it? Over, over, over! Uh, and he's pointing to the right side of the vessel. Are we and supposed to jump over? Uh, no, we're... the the crew all heads to the right side of the ship. Oh. Yeah, Zadar runs to the right side of the ship with the crew. Is this a Pirates the Caribbean thing? Camille and Daphne, do you lucky. head to the right side? Of course. Daphne, not that my weight would make a difference. I slowly go there. <laughs> you you what? Slowly go there. Fair enough. Uh, a greasy tentacle, grayish black, comes up over the side. Uh, Camille, you are the first to react with a 13. What would you like to do? Uh, Sushi. 13. Sushi. 
So is there anybody in the way between me and the tentacle? You're short. You can get up there. Oh, that's true. Um... Darn these glasses. I think I will do Thunder Wave. Oh, crap. Okay. Um, sure. I assume you're going to point it up and over the side, or are you going to hit the tentacle that is on the wood? You could destroy the ship. <laughs> I don't want to destroy the ship, so whatever is not going to destroy the ship. So you thunder wave over the side. Yes. Fair enough. And it is... I can't read it. Somebody figure it out. What do I need to roll? I think it's like 66 or some oh. yeah, bullshit something like that. Like that. Uh, depends what level she casts it. So. Uh... Thunder clap, thunder is smite, thunder wave, the uh, fifteen foot cube mm -hmm. sweeps out from you. A con save or take two d eight and be pushed away. Okay, roll 2d8. Oh. Eleven. Ooh-wee. Uh... Bits and pieces of grayish green material fly up. The ship lurches towards the left. Everybody make a dexterity save, please. 17. Uh, 14. Sorry, what? Dexterity save. Oh, saving throw. Mm -hmm. Almost 17. Wait, that what you guys just said? Dexterity. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, you three are able to stabilize yourself. Half the crew goes You're like headed to the left side uh, as the ship lurches badly. A scream comes from the captain's quarters as to what the fuck's going on out there uh, just as the ship tilts violently. Next one up is uh, Zadar with a 10. Uh, uh, Three is more the... tentacles come up and over. Okay. Uh, magic missile uh, okay. to the the nearest tentacle. Okay. Uh, and uh, I roll. There rolled. should be no crossovers. Uh, it's thirteen points of force damage. Sure. Uh, one of the tentacles just is obliterated. Uh, goo covers the deck. Uh, the crew tries to regain their feet, and you hear a scream from the left side, a miss, and a hit. Uh, one of the crewmen who managed to maintain his hooves, uh, takes an axe and splits off yet another tentacle on the right side. As you guys glance over at the screen, two tentacles are on the left side of the vessel, and one of them has a crewman. Uh, we go now to the four. Daphne, what are you going to do? You are in the center of the ship since you were lollygagging. Uh, there are two tentacles here, two tentacles on the other side. One of the tentacles on the left has engulfed a sailor. Is anything within like five feet of me? Five? No. So I have to move to it. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Want, I guess you, the one that has the sailor? To the left. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. <clears throat> it won't require all of your movements, so you'll still get in there. Wow, I uh, does a six or eight. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, as you, as you try and stab at the tentacle as it is retreating with the Minotaur sailor struggling, you miss, and that tentacle whoop goes overboard. Uh, you can all hear the captain. Wait, with the sailor? Mm -hmm. oh. You can all hear uh, the captain yelling for Theseus, uh, get your ass up here. Uh, He's sad boy. New round. He's too tired. No, me Thir sad boy. You should hang out with me today. <laughs> what did I do to upset her? 13, Camille, round two. You're up. That is. Um, I want to do magic missile too. Okay. You destroy one of them as well. I only had one hit point left. <clears throat> uh, my turn on the tentacles. Uh, one to two Camille, three to four Zadar, five to six a crewman. Crewman number six. Uh, hit. <laughs> uh, he is wrapped up in a tentacle. Uh, moving to Zadar. Uh, Zadar is going to upcast magic missile and four uh, missiles are going to shoot out uh, right. for a total of 18 points of damage. That will kill it. However, D12 against me. <laughs> 12 11 that was close uh, the crewman goes over into the water uh the crewman uh it's now the crewman's turn uh <laughs> interesting uh rushes to the side and throws a rope over over on the other side oh yeah that's that's doing some damage right there. <laughs> one. <laughs> so over on the right side, there is one tentacle vis or visible. Uh, Daphne, you are there. The tentacle with the semen <laughs> is uh, over the side and gone underneath the water. There is one tentacle that is being attacked by a different sailor. Wait, so no, no tentacles are near me, right? So one, there's one tentacle there. left. Oh. One tentacle on the left. No tentacles on the right. I, I attack the tentacle on the left. Sure. Maybe. Attempt to. Okay. Does a 13 hit? 13 does hit. And 22 hits? Oh, yeah. Awesome. Cool. And then. I'm also going to do the Vine Smite with the one. Sure. Right. All right. Okay. Oh my god, so many things roll. Oh, Scroll up, computer. Okay, so. Thirteen slashing, right? That's what that is. Yep. Damage yeah. and then nine. You split the tentacle in half like a planaria worm, covering yourself and the sailor in goo or ichor. Uh, the tip of the tentacle falls to the deck and begins to inch away. Uh, give me a perception check, Daphne. Eat it. 
I eat it? For Thirteen. Uh, you see Theseus moving over and plucking it and throwing it into a small sack. Uh, he looks over at you, licks his thumb seductively, <laughs> and wipes the eye core off of your face, leaving you looking like a raccoon with everything else peppered in eye core. Uh, the sailor next to you, Daphne, looks at him and goes, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> over on the right side <clears throat> excuse me uh camille zadar you notice that one of the sailors got dragged over one of the other sailors has gone ahead and thrown a rope what would you two like to do uh i'm gonna go uh assist the crewman with trying to get the the one that goes overboard that went overboard okay Camille, what are you doing? We have to had... try to save him. Okay. As you guys look over, who wants to D12 against me? I will. 12 again. <laughs> oh, man. Who's going against him? <laughs> Five. Uh, the crewman is sucking water and appears to be unconscious. Oh. You can go over or wait for the Minotaur Sailor to jump over. Uh, Zadar will go over. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, anything but a 19 or 20 on a D20. 16. You come close to landing on the Minotaur Sailor's back uh, as you plunge into the water, uh, now covered in chum <laughs> from the... Uh, Tentacles. Uh, give me a perception check. Uh, perception is let's see, perception. Uh, fourteen at that point. Uh, 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 oh shit! Because <laughs> uh, there's chum nah, in the water. Give me a survival roll to uh, lash this guy with the rope. Okay, good. 21. <laughs> uh, you quickly uh, suspend the rope underneath his armpits and tie it off, giving it a quick tug. Did uh -huh. you want to ride up as the remaining sailors start? Oh, yeah. <laughs> as you do, D12 against me. Eight. Uh, just as you get out of the water, no, 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 a shark passes underneath the ship. Uh, you are hoisted above rather quickly. Uh, odd, it's one name, even it's the other. Oh, thank God you saved Larry. I saved the Larry. Yep. Larry is save salvation for larry does he have uh, like a horn missing you know like a wound <laughs> uh, yes and, he, and he's he's kind of got suction cups all over oh um, no <clears throat> yeah so uh, it looks like so, something from star trek on the other side daphne uh you notice the passing of steve <gasps> sailor steve did not make the grade no. uh there is Steve. nothing to be seen uh, until you see a fin and a billowing plume of crimson blood fill the water. Well, uh, at the least he died in a very good place. Died, died in a very semeny way. Yeah, it's what he would have wanted. Yeah, that's how I want to go. <laughs> uh, yeah. The captain is livid, wants to know what's going on. Uh, the crew is clearly upset. Uh, does anybody want to step in and tell them what's going on? Or do you just want to let the crew tell them the bad news? Um, I guess let the crew tell them the bad news. Uh, he takes it okay. Uh, but he lambasts the uh, crewman in the crow's nest and points out that lashes will be doled out at the ineptitude. Oh. Uh, how many lashes will he get? Yeah, that's fair. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
So he is called down to answer to the man. Uh, replacement Minotaur is sent up. Uh, he, fast, he asks the Minotaur if he wants anything to bite on, and uh, the Minotaur says no. Uh, seven lashes are administered, and they look painful. Uh, everyone, including Theseus, has seen this before, uh, but it's still... Ooh. Uh, every, <laughs> give me a straight-up D20 on how you guys take this. Uh, straight up D twenty three. Fifteen. Sixteen. Uh, Daphne has seen something similar to this in the boudoir <laughs> of uh, Theseus. Uh, Camille, you're yeah. Uh, <laughs> and Sidar has wet himself mm -hmm. at the ferocity. <laughs> <laughs> the, oh. the, the Minotaur is bleeding. Uh, a bucket of salt water is thrown on to wash oh. the blood away. Uh, and the individual is relieved of duty for the day and told to go deal with Theseus uh, for healing. Uh, the watch is now doubled. Uh, repairs are being made from the Thunder Wave. Uh, and the Zadar's on deck with press the digitation, get an <laughs> icon. <laughs> yeah, and, and then uh, the rain continues. This is the end of day 11. Uh, Two day, more. Uh, night 11, Daphne, who you bunking with? My new boyfriend. Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> day 12, who's giving me the weather report? I'll Somebody do else it. Do <laughs> what do I roll? D4. Uh, D4. D4. Whoop, whoop, two. Cloudy. Cloudy again. day. Day 12 begins cloudy. Uh, constitution check Daphne. Wow, not one. <laughs> I, don't know. I will say he beats you into submission <laughs> with a night that you never anticipated. Okay. <laughs> you have found the love of your life. Apparently. This guy is a machine. <laughs> uh, day 12, uh, Camille, Zadar, you wake up, notice, still no Daphne. Yeah. By this time, uh, you've grown accustomed to it. I'm just um, like, and I can't blame her. <laughs> uh, as all three, what do you three want to do today? Uh, I guess there, uh, there's a small religious ceremony uh, to honor Seaman Steve. <laughs> yeah, Zadar, Zadar, yeah, we'll, we'll attend the ceremonies. Very good. Uh, kind words are spoken uh, by the Minotaur who was lashed, as it turns out. Uh, Steve and Mikey, the lashed Minotaur, uh, were close friends. Uh, they'd been together for quite some time. So uh, well, that's sad. That is why he endured the lashing. Uh, yeah. With the cloudy day, uh, everybody on deck, give me a perception check. Sixteen. Twenty-two. Four. Oh, four. Uh, Daphne, your eyes are still glazed over, glued shut, whatever. Uh, Zadar, <laughs> Camille. <laughs> Zadar and Camille. Uh, birds are in the sky. Well, we yeah. must be close to land then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Captain uh, Montross does point out, uh, yes, uh, we're just a few hours out. We should be there by daybreak. We're making good time. Uh, he invites you again, since this is your last night, to dine with him. Uh, Daphne, the invitation is extended to you as well. Theseus will again provide uh, superior sustenance. Uh, when he was a cook in Michelin, uh, he received numerous awards. Some stars, huh? That's, that's right. <laughs> couple. 
they just raved. Uh, dinner is served. Uh, the captain asks if you will introduce him to Mortimer or to this Sneed individual, as he has very direct orders to give the package only to Sneed and not tell anyone else about it once they make landfall. I'm kind of uh, concerned about that. I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> What if somebody I'm, wants to hurt Mortimer? That could be. could be an exploding package. Exactly. Uh, <clears throat> as you guys uh, turn in for the night, uh, really, the, the seas are getting calm. Uh, it, it looks like, you know, it's going to be a good day tomorrow. Daphne, are you still whoring it up with your new frown bow? It, I'm not a whore. We are now in a relationship. Okay. Oh, okay. You, you changed your Facebook status. Yeah, exactly. Very good. Uh, she didn't kill the stream, did she? No, my dice just went everywhere. All right. Uh, you guys uh, spend the night in bed. Daphne, give me one more con check. No. I'm going to have to make her do a pregnancy do, check, do, Frank. Do, do, do. <laughs> 19. She has magic for that. Yeah you're, yeah, you're you're finally getting the hang of this so you won't walk like a cowboy in the morning. <laughs> Uh, and you guys have, have reached a special bond. Uh, it's lust at first sight for you guys. Uh, Zadar and Camille, you guys wake up again paired. Uh, today, uh, land ho is heard. Uh, <laughs> and the day is sunny. Mm. So it's your first nice day out there. Uh, you also hear a second bellow from the crow's nest. That thing's up there again. Ah, oh, our balloon. Your balloon. Uh, you guys They're ended up. They're just waiting up there. They're like three days earlier than us. Well, you uh, because you guys rolled so shitty, you were almost seven degrees north of where he was supposed to be uh so he had to correct <laughs> he, he had to make the big change because the island as you approach it uh is rather small uh there are several buildings so he can't land yeah he's landing okay yeah he's just late um and he and suki seem to be no worse for the wear uh with only those two in there uh they actually oh, went, chicken brown cow they went way off course uh and had to correct mm -hmm. uh but just ahead of you they are landing in a rocky grassy area and you are putting into port there is a single ramshackle pier here uh and captain uh, montross says uh we're too big for that so we're gonna have to put out long boats uh with the amount of cargo we have we are going to put out two long boats uh i will go ashore in the second one Theseus will go ashore in the first one which boats would you guys like to take well obviously our tiefling's gonna be wrapped around Theseus. Yep, or at least parts of them. Mm, right. So we'll go with the captain. Fair enough. There is a uh, substantial amount of cargo, including uh, a small rosewood box uh, tucked underneath Captain Montross's arm tightly. Can uh, I... Tightly. Can I do a check to see if I recognize that box? It's a simple rosewood box. Oh, okay. Because we've run into rosewood boxes before. I thought that was one in particular. Uh, it's standard. I, okay. Yeah, you can. I mean, it it has no discernible markings on it. It's very okay. unobtrusive. It's just a simple box. Okay. Uh, but you can tell the veins are just ripe on his bicep as he clinches that thing tightly. Uh, he is not he is going to make sure that nothing happens to it uh daphne roll a survival check let's see if you have distracted theseus too much with your feminine wiles and you guys 
kind of wreck the boat. Ooh, six. Yep, you guys wreck the boat. Uh, you crash it into the pier. Um, <laughs> what? Is that how we die? No, you guys won't die. Uh, the captain, however, is following behind on the boat, sees you guys wreck his longboat. <laughs> uh, not happy. Uh, uh, you guys land next to on the other side of the pier. So both Minotaur longboats are at the dock. Several uh, individuals in robes, kind of uh, scholarly looking types, uh, form a dual line and head down from uh, the wooden buildings, not stone at this time, uh, and uh, come to greet you. Uh, one of the uh, scholars is a female, single braid, shaved head, asks if he is Captain Montrose. He affirms it and says he has a package for Sneed. And the captain in your presence is told that uh, Mortimer J. Sneed is not currently on the grounds. Uh, the captain is peeved a little bit. And he okay. said, I am responsible for this item and I am not to turn it over to anyone. Uh, the scholar bows her head. Of course, we have room for you in our buildings, or you may return to your ship. We anticipate him within a few hours. Do I recognize yeah. the acolyte or whatever oh, it's called? Never no. seen him. Uh, Elvin. Elvin, but a single braid, shaved head. Okay. Uh, looks very standard, uh, uncaring, not oh. quite dead in the eyes, but, you know, uh, yeah. A, yeah. an arrogant high elf. Uh, right. The others, you can tell, <clears throat> are a mixed group of races. Now, everybody give me an arcana check. Uh, 16. Daphne and Camille, Arcana. Oh, wow. Um, 24. Nice. Something. Jesus Christ, your rolls suck. <laughs> While you're lip lock and Theseus, <laughs> you are not paying attention to anything else. Uh, Zadar and Camille, you are well know that the Grand Academy is a place for higher learning and the training of heroes. Uh, Camille, you also know that they only accept people every 10 years. Uh, so it is a long term commitment. Uh, both of you realize that <clears throat> the Grand Academy is home to a wide variety of races from the region, uh, regardless of uh, economic, socioeconomic issues. Uh, they go around and accept acolytes who have great potential. Uh, so you will see in this uh, two-pronged column, uh, you will see gnomes, dwarves, an Aarakocra, elves and half elves, uh, and one creature that you, have, that you have never seen before. It looks reptilian. Uh. <laughs> uh, everybody, Arcana check. Again? I forget, but I don't remember what no. it's called. <gasps> 20, not natural. 26. Uh, Camille, you cannot, for the life of you, recall what it is. Zadar and Daphne recognize it, and Daphne calls out, it's a dragonborn. Uh, uh, they are mythological, or so you thought. Uh -huh. Apparently, they do exist, uh, which is highly unusual. Uh, again, Stoic faces by everybody, even the dragonborn when called out. Uh, captain's like, do you got anything to drink? Uh, 
the scholar says, yes, come up to the building. Uh, the main building itself is a two-story structure made of wood. Right next to it are the uh, footings uh, of carved stone. It appears as though the main building is going to be replaced by one of the stone structure. And from the size of it, it is going to be large. Uh, the rocks seem to be quarried from the edge of the coast uh, and are being fashioned in several ways. Uh, some of the demi-human uh, creatures with mason skills are present. There are also creatures there not wearing robes, i.e. workmen. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you guys like to do on this well, small island? Zadar run the... Uh goes into his sack and make sure the football is still there <laughs> it is okay yeah because yep. we still have to like dispose of our mm -hmm. thing correct mm -hmm. the telosian artifact right you still have it uh as you notice it uh, as you guys look around you start to notice uh, a group of acolytes surrounding a specific section of uh, stone where the stone is being quarried at. The workers step back and uh, move to one side and everybody just kind of stands there. Okay. okay. I observe. <laughs> the captain goes inside with the ponytail. Uh, he's just getting something to drink. He's tired. Okay. Uh, Theseus and Daphne are still lip locking each other. Of course. Everybody roll perception check. Okay. I know two so bad on this roll. Ooh, okay. Twelve. Ooh, twenty. Twenty-five for Zadar. All three of you hear a popping, a crackling. Uh, Rice Krispies. You seem to have recognized this sound from somewhere <laughs> before. A moment later, a blinding light appears within the circle of people around the stone area. Oh my. A loud crack of thunder is heard, uh, and you have to shield your eyes. Uh, there's an acrid smell in the air, and as you regain your senses, you look over, and there are three figures on the stones starting to get up you God recognize damn it. the tall stately figure of mortimer j sneed <laughs> oh, uh, smoke is coming from his eyebrows and he has a large blood stain uh near Good. his rib cage uh the raven-headed zephyr zobek uh is also present she is wounded on the shoulder uh oh that she parts of her hair are also on fire oh, gosh. Uh, and the third one uh is a middle-aged man uh he seems to have a rather grievous leg wound uh and he has scorch marks in his robe uh the scholars close in on them with water uh and mortimer who is standing just pushes them all back. Tend to my friends. Tend to my friends. It's my husband. Daphne? Zadar? Camille? Uh-huh. Is that you? He, he walks over and oh, no. his, his eyebrows are still kind of on fire and smoldering. <laughs> he reaches out his hands and he hugs each of you. Uh, Daphne, D12 against me. The bad hug. <laughs> it is if your boyfriend's watching. <laughs> Eleven. Uh, your boyfriend doesn't seem to mind. Uh, He's so, a himbo. I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, the scholars whisk away uh, Zephyr and this middle-aged man, uh, and makeshift litter him up to the large building. Uh, as always. Mortimer didn't come back empty-handed, oh and he's got God. he's got this large kind of jewel. And he goes, Whew, thought I lost it. How have like, you been? 
we're good, Mortimer. What kind of trouble have you been getting into? Oh, I, you know me. I'm Mortimer J. Steed. I'm currently at the Grand Academy, Academy. Here, <laughs> teaching. Uh, <laughs> it changed a little bit, huh, Mortimer? Small trouble. Small trouble. Very little. Very minor. Very minor. Uh, no altercations of a sexual nature at this point in time. Why uh, you add that? My friends, it is good to see you. It has been too long. Come, let us go up and let us eat and uh, let us share tales of daring do. You know, I happen to have seen a large minotaur around, have you? He is waiting for yeah. us inside. <laughs> Excellent. Let's go. Uh, with that, we will end it. No. Uh, yes. No. We need to go talk to the minotaur. He's here. It's not like he's somewhere else. Well, Mortimer is making his way there, so it's not like he's making my way downtown. There you go, (laughs) making my way. (laughs) Making my way to many times. Caitlin, uh, you were a little bit late, but what'd you think? It's good. I'm glad no one died yet, and we're getting we're getting places. So, what is the timeline that we're in now compared to? I don't the know what you're campaign. talking about. Fuck, <laughs> <laughs> Frank. <laughs> why, why, why would you even consider that an issue at all? Uh, so, David, what'd you think? I enjoyed it. I'm intrigued now. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, I kind of see where this is going. That's, that's what the game is all about. Uh, Carrie, what'd you think? I'm mad. Because sure. you, knew you, would, you knew I would be. Yeah, because Mortimer is doing time travel. Well, yeah, for uh-huh. a reason. <sighs> you know, I'm just mad. I'm just mad. It doesn't need to end. It could be a soap opera that goes on forever. It could. It the could. DM but needs a break. <laughs> you don't love me. Uh-huh. That's so right. I'm just throwing I... that out there. I appreciate that. Uh, folks, this has been Murder Hobo Inc. The Calamity, or I'm sorry, the Cacophony Campaign. I was about to say, wrong one. <laughs> wrong one. Too many, cam- too many campaigns. Uh, no, this is my good group. And, until Aww. next Saturday, and they'll be my good group. Uh, yeah. <laughs> don't forget to follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to shoot shit about D&D, join our Discord. If you want to buy our cool crap, like my shirt or David's shirt or Carrie's shirt. Uh, sorry. Nothing my Kate, shirt. I'm just ne- nothing, nothing Caitlin has on is for sale, at least. Or unless, is it? Or is unless, it? <laughs> unless you're a male tiefling. Uh, don't forget if you want dice rolls that don't suck uh, at Pirate Dog Dice on Twitter, hit them up for some custom dice. And if your game stinks, unlike ours, uh, Adventure Sense by OddFishGames.com, also the maker of the Shine system, so you can write gooder. Uh, and also uh, coming almost around the corner, a Kickstarter for how to RPG with your cat. Uh, for all of us here, at, oh. Uh, also, if you want to be on a one shot like this Saturday called Shanghai, <clears throat> just saying, uh, M Hobo Inc., <laughs> Twitter or Gmail, uh, or uh, Tuesday Talk Show, if you want to be on there, uh, give one of us a rest. Uh, just hit us up, we will try and get you on there. For all of us here at Murder Hobo Inc., we hope to see you on Saturday for the one shot. Uh, Shanghai. Uh, let's give the old baby game kiss and wave. Mwah, bye, everybody. Bye, y'all. Thanks for watching. <laughs>